Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill, and over there is John Lewandowski. How you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. All right. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Hard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. Or you can check them out on eBay at Hockey Locker Milwaukee. Type them in in the little search bar and you'll find them. Um, before we get into our show, um, during the game tonight, we were all hit with some so sad news. Um, Matthew Perry passed away. Um, one of the stars of Friends, um, our thoughts are with his family um, and friends. No puns intended. Right. But literally the cast of Friends. Yeah. Um, I grew up watching Friends. Me too. But John saw Friends as, ki as a kid. So we all grew up with it. And uh, just a little bit of a sad news. Um, don't know much. I know he drowned. Don't know what happened. But... Um, all I know is something about his hot tub. He drowned in his hot tub. Well, and that could be anything from a heart attack, stroke. Right. Um, had a little too much to drink and fell asleep. Right. <laughs> you know, you just don't know. No. I'm sure we'll know in the next coming days, but, you know, um, it's just sad. Um, lots of sad in the news lately. Um, and I'm going to just leave that at that. <laughs> Yeah. As we saw more breaking sad news, but we're not talking about it here. No. This is not one of those shows. Um, and other news, I wanted to say that um, before I got into the show, uh, congratulations to uh, my kids' uh, scout pack, where they uh, they um, all got uh, scout night badges from the admirals. Um, so congratulations on that. On a hockey note, it is hockey. <laughs> my uh, my kids were uh, my one of my kids was up there. Um, Alex will be joining as soon as he is eligible. So, um, but let's get into why we're here. And first up on the docket was the game that John couldn't watch. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is. The Nashville Predators taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, All right. So, shots on goal per period. Um, Toronto outshot Nashville 12 to 6 in the first period. In the second period, Toronto outshot Nashville 13 to 9. In the third period, Toronto outshoots Nashville again 10 to 8. And in overtime, Toronto had no shots while Nashville had a shot for total shots of Toronto outshooting Nashville 35 to 24. Now in the faceoff circle, Toronto was a little bit better at 54.2% to Nashville's 45.8%. Toronto on the power play went one for four with 10 penalty minutes while Nashville went two for five with eight penalty minutes. Nashville out hits Toronto 26 to 16 and out blocks Toronto 21 to 13. Scoring in the first was William Nylander with his sixth with an assist from Matthews, his third, and Marner, his fifth. Uh, that was on the power play off of a slap shot. Uh, that literally, what, two minutes later? About Ryan O'Reilly makes the team that let him go pay. Uh, with his start of the season with an assist from Robin Yossi, his fourth, and Phil Forsberg, his fifth. That was a wrist shot on the power play. Then in the second period at the 1246 mark, Giordano scores his first of the year for Toronto with an assist by Camp, his second of the year. Then at the 15.08 mark, O'Reilly scores his fourth of the year, assisted by Forsberg, his sixth, and Evangelista, his third. That was a power play goal. There's also a tip-in. 
Uh, yeah. Then in overtime, the captain, Roman Yossi, with his first of the season. Way to get your first one of the year. Right. But it matters. Uh, with an assist from Evangelista, his fourth, and Novak, his second. That was on a snapshot. Um, Let's see here. Your referees, Regine Heber and Carter Sedlak, lines persons, as what they're calling him now. Um, Tommy Hughes and Johnny Mori. Uh, head coach for Nashville is Andrew Burnett, and head coach for Toronto is Sheldon Keith. Scratches for Nashville were Michael McCarron, Cody Glass, and Sal Samuel Fajimo. Uh, scratches for the Leafs were Jacob or Jake McCabe. Uh, when he came into the league, he was known as Jacob McCabe. Uh, Foodie, Foodie. Okay, Foodie was a minus one. With five minutes, 25 seconds on ice. Okay. Mm. All righty. Uh, why are my box scores not working? In net four, the Preds was UC Saro stopping 33 of 35 with a point nine four three save percentage. And he allowed one on the power play and one on even strength, stopped all three short-handed. And net for the Toronto Maple Leafs was Ilya Samsonov. Uh, he stopped 21 of 24 with a point eight seven five save percentage. Your three stars of the game are... Third star of the game was Phil Forsberg with two assists, Ryan O'Reilly with two goals, and Roman Yossi with a goal and an assist. In that order. All righty, on to the next one, because we do have a little bit more of a show for you. Not much, but a little bit. So we're going to have to pick up the pace a little. <laughs> All right. All right, so the Milwaukee Admirals took on the Iowa Wild. Shots on goal in the first period. Milwaukee outshoots Iowa 20-3. to In the second period, Milwaukee outshoots Iowa 11-8. to in the third period, Milwaukee outshoots Iowa 15 to 6. In overtime, Milwaukee outshoots Iowa 1 to nothing. And in total, Milwaukee outshoots Iowa 47 to 17. On the power play, Iowa goes 0 for 1 with 6 minutes, 3 infractions, while Milwaukee goes 0 for 2 with 4 minutes, 2 infractions. And those two infractions that Milwaukee uh, uh, had for the power play. Uh, two of them uh, was a five on three for about a minute. Yeah. All right. I got the scoring. <laughs> <laughs> scoring in the first. Nothing. Scoring in the second. Jasper Weatherby with his first as an admiral. Uh, assisted by Jake Livingstone. His first point as an admiral, I believe. I don't think he has a goal yet. But I'm going to double check just to make sure. He does not. All righty. Then Nick Patan scores his first with an assist from Sammy Walker and Stephen Fogarty. Uh, Walker's first, Fogarty second, Patan's first. Uh, then in the third period, scoring, nothing. Well, he said there was one shot, so let's get into it. Dennis Kiryanov, his second goal of the season, he has a point in every Admirals game played. Yeah, and it was a beautiful backhander, too. Yeah, because they couldn't find the puck. <laughs> <laughs> the puck was stuck behind the bar. <laughs> behind the water bottle or by the water bottle. Yeah. Um, with an assist from Mr. Overtime, Spencer Statsny and Mark. Jankowski, who has to go get ready to play for the uh, World Series. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. No, there is a Jankowski on the Texas Rangers, so no uh, all joking aside. Um, in net for the Wild was uh, Zane McIntyre. He stopped 45 of 47. 
Um, in net for the Admirals was Yaroslav Askarov. He stopped 60 to 17. Um, easy night for the Admirals, kind of. Uh, a little extra work, but it only took 25 seconds. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, three stars of the game with the game winner, Dennis Kiriana was the third star. Second star was Jasper Weatherby. First star was Zane McIntyre with 45 saves on 47 shots. That's a night and a half work. Yeah. So he he as much as I want to say that you know maybe Yaro deserved to be up there as the winning goalie. He earned that spot. Yeah. So uh head coach for the Iowa Wild is uh Brent McLean with an assistant coach Patrick Dwyer and Ben Simmons. Uh, Gold safety coach is Richard Bachman. Um, Milwaukee's head coaching is Carl Taylor, Scott Ford, and Greg Rollo. 3,221 attended this Admirals game. Your referees were Jonathan Satarski and Sean Davis. Ugh, I hate Sean Davis. And I'm saying that on camera. <laughs> Just not a fan of one of the calls he made during the game. Just not. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um, Greg Offerman and TJ Lyle as your linesman. Um, there was a roughing that was called against the Admirals when the other guy punched him first in the face. So, yeah. yeah. Um, just not a fan of that. All righty. I wasn't a fan of the high sticking where he just ran into him. Yeah, the stick. He he stick lifted in him himself. Yeah. So, you know, I wasn't a fan of that call, but I think we got the worst end of that roughing call. We should have got the power play. Yeah. So, all righty. On to the CHL. All right, the Atlanta Gladiators took on the Allen Americans. Shots on goal in the first period. Atlanta outshoots Allen 11 to 7. In the second period, Atlanta outshoots Allen 18 to 10. In the third period, Atlanta outshoots Allen 13 to 8. And in total, Atlanta outshoots Allen 42 to 25. So you're telling me the only teams with 40 plus shots are us and <laughs> Atlanta. Come on, Nashville, get it together. I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um scoring in the first for uh the Allen Americans was Colton Hargrove with an assist from Matt Marshu or Marshnu. Uh that, that was at the 147 mark. Um then scoring at the 1621 mark. Micah Miller scores with an assist from Mitchell Fossier and Reese Vitale. Then in the second period at the 11.33 mark, Allen scores from Brandon Puricelli, assisted by Spencer Asher and Chad Butcher. Then at the 12.43 mark, Allen scores again with a goal from Colton Hargrove. Then at the 13.08 mark, Atlanta scores with a goal from Ryan Cranford, assisted by Michael Marchazon. Then at the 14.23 mark, Atlanta scores again the goal by Reese Vitelli, assisted by Aiden De La Grendre and Jackson Pearson. Then in the third, at the 135 mark, Micah Miller scores, assisted by Reese Vitale and Aiden Dalla Groinier. I believe I heard that pronounced that way. Um, but we'll get there. I'll figure it out. All right. I'm gonna be checking out how to pronounce some of these names here over the time we have off during um the next couple of days. Um then scored at the 1611 mark was Mitchell Fossier with an assist from Michael Miller and Reese Vitali. Reese Vitali had a game. Yeah. One, two. He had a goal and three assists so far. 
All right, then at the 1829 mark, Mitchell Fossier scores with an assist from Alex Whelan. So Fossier had one, two, two goals and an assist. Uh, okay. Um, aha, there it is. Your three stars of the game. Third star of the game was uh, Reese Vitale. First star, second star of the game was Fossier, and Micah Miller was the first star. Um, attendance at the Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Oof. Good luck getting that one through. Um, he they had five thousand four hundred and eighty-two in that. For the Atlanta Gladiators was Hammond. He stopped 22 of 25 with three goals against. And they had uh, Sinclair in net for Allen, uh, stopping 36 of 41. There was one goal scored on an empty net. Huh. Given everything. Kind of curious to how that empty net went in. Um, your referees were Hunter Mottinger and your linesman was Michael Megans and Jake Hogue. Um, Atlanta went one for three on the power play while Allen went 0 oh for three. If you wanted to know that as well. Okay. Power play goal was the third goal of um, the game in the second, so the last goal of the second was a power play goal. The empty net goal was scored at the 18-29 mark. Um, so, yeah, that's about all we got there. All right, so like I said, we have a little bit more into our show, so let's jump into those two parts. One, I would like to thank Joe Thornton, Jumbo Joe, 24 seasons over 539 points. He was a uh, selected number one overall in the 1997 draft. Um, Thornton is 12th in NHL history in points. Um, he played for San Jose from 2005 to 2020. Ranks first in Sharks history in assist, second in points, third in games played, fourth in goals, in the seasons he was there, 13 out of the 15 seasons, they made the playoffs. He won the Hart Trophy in 05, 06 season, as well as the Art Ross, um, where he had 125 points with 29 goals, 96 assists, and 81 games for the Bruins and Sharks. Um, I'm fully aware, just in case. Um, you know, before before we run out of time here, uh, thoughts on Jumbo Joe's career? Um, 
heck of a career. I mean, to play hockey for 25 years. Right. I mean, this sport is so brutal. There are guys you see maybe two, five, ten years, and they're gone. They're just right. Or they go overseas and ride off into the sunset. Right. Um, in that case, also, I would like to thank Thomas Plakanich, as an injury has ended his career as well with Colondo, which is Yager's team over in um, the Czech Republic. Um, he announced his retirement as well due to injury. Um, beyond that, uh, Shane Pinto, <laughs> you know, it was coming 41 game suspension for gambling when the team's helmet sponsor is a gambling company. Thoughts, <laughs> uh, not smart for sure. Um, here's the thing you could have gambled on any other sport. Why hockey? Right. Like, you could be gambling on basketball and nobody would have had an eye. You could have been gambling on football, nobody would have had an eye. Baseball, nobody would have had an eye. You bet on hockey whether you're in the game or not, and they're they're going to smack you. And I'm wondering what games you were betting on, and, hey, you did this to yourself. Take your penalty. <clears throat> I'm not sure if he's going to appeal it. I've heard rumblings that there is an appeals process taking place by the NHLPA, barring that he completes his um, NHL player safety protocol for gambling. Um, that is a requirement for him to come back um, if uh, if they get the appeal, if he completes that, he if he can play before his 41 game suspension's up. Now, that suspension is retroactive to the first game of the season since he was unable to play. Um, and unfortunately, that will put him into January into the games. And he has to have a contract signed with the Senators before December 1st, or he's ineligible to play for the 2023-2024 season. Um, the situation here for the Senators doesn't look good. No. Um, uh, if any recommendation I would make is tell them to sign him to two-way deal. Right. Short one-year so. two-way deal. And just give him the max rookie, whatever, max two-way deal, and, and just go from there. I, I, yeah. I honestly think that that would be the best option. Um, Other than that, uh, what else we got here? Oh, down goes Vegas. Vegas loses, finally. Um, They're saying McDavid's likely to return for the Heritage Classic, which is coming up. Uh, okay, it's this Sunday. All righty. Um, so, uh, The uh around the league, the Ducks beat the Flyers seven to four. Um, the Panthers beat the Kraken three to two. The Bruins beat the Red Wings four to one. The Islanders shut out Columbus at two to nothing. Montreal beats Winnipeg four to three. Obviously, we've covered Nashville three to two in overtime. For those of you who are skipping around on our video, Ottawa beats Pittsburgh five to two. Um, currently, I'm gonna refresh this here a little bit and see. Okay. Um, currently, uh, the Rangers in Vancouver are tied at one and one nothing, and uh, the uh, Kings are beating the Golden Knights one to nothing. All right, so barring all that, you could watch the Heritage Classic tomorrow. It's at 7 Eastern time, 6 Central. I think it's like 4 Pacific. 
in like five mountain time or like five thirty. Mountain time's weird. Um, but you can watch it on TBS, Max, Sportsnet, and TZA Sports for those of you in Canada and Europe. Um, before we get into anything, uh, before we wrap up our show here, um, just go with final thoughts here. Um, next week we will be back with the, in the system, um, we're going to work out how we're going to get that done, but yeah. we'll get there. <laughs> um, cause we'll probably have another triple. <laughs> um, but let's just say this, um, you know, Good night for our group. Yeah. Um. You know, thinking about it and looking back, um, kind of, the Admirals are kind of sitting in an okay spot. We're three and two now, I think. I think so. And, you know, Preds are doing all right. You know, they're... Oh boy. Uh, hang on. All righty. I am going to do that final check myself here. Check the standings because you never know. Um, Nashville is four and four in fourth place. Um, kind of where I thought we'd be. Uh, the Blackhawks, Arizona, the Blues are all at the bottom where I thought they'd be. Um, ah, yes, the Sharks. Are we ever going to talk about their 0 and 0 7 1 and 1 record? Or their 0 7 and 1 record? Okay. They have yet to win a game. There's no team. Okay, there is one. Okay, they have an overtime loss. There's only one team without a regulation loss. Well, no, because Chicago gave that one to Vegas. So they, yeah, two teams without a regulation loss. Vegas and Boston. Go ahead. Keep playing that way all year. You'll get tired. Let me tell you, as a team that won the, the President's Trophy and then got bounced in the second round, you'll get tired. Go ahead. Keep playing that way. You know, that's just how it is. When it comes to playing a team seven times in a row, you can't do the same thing every night. All right. So, um, beyond that, I, I, I really don't have a whole lot for the rest of this show. Um. Ah, yes, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Go and check out our X account, formerly Twitter. Uh, go check out uh, our X accounts. There's co-host and host. Co-host posts all the graphics. Hi, John. <laughs> um, but that's all, folks. Abadi, abadi, goodbye. Mm -hmm.